Good afternoon everyone, we are live and it is a rather warm day out there today, sorry for stating the obvious. My name is Hannah Roxbury and I am the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts. As we always do with these uh, live demonstrations here on Carnation Crafters, we're going to give it a little while just so that everyone who wants to find us live can do so. Um, I can see a couple of people already joining in, so thank you so much for your company. Um, give us a little mention on the screen, let us know uh, that you can hear us and that you can see us okay, because those are the most important things. And this afternoon is all about you guys. So we haven't managed to do a Facebook Live for a couple of weeks because a little thing called Christmas <laughs> was taking up quite a lot of the uh, the free days that we had to do the lives in. So by all means, um, if you've got any questions as we go along through the demonstration, just type them up. You guys, if you've seen these before, probably already know how rubbish I am at trying to read, comment, speak out loud, demonstrate, work a camera. <laughs> so it's always a bit of a giggle, but by all means, any questions, just type them up in the comments. I will scroll back and I will try and keep up with them all. Um, I hope you guys can hear me. No one's said anything yet. Give us a hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, let me know what you've been up to today as well. I hope you've at least had some time to enjoy the sunshine outside. It is a glorious day out there, which does make it very strange when we're making Christmas cards, because that's essentially what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to be having a little play with the Christmas Eve collection, uh, the large collection, lovely big collection, full of Christmas goodiness that launched on Crayon Craft about, I'm going to say two weeks ago. I'm going to go two weeks. It might be more than that, but I think it's two weeks. Um, and that was our sort of traditional um, Christmas affair with all of the wonderful tunnel cards, the stags, the robins, the pine trees, lots and lots of elements to get you guys in the Christmassy mood. Helen's here. Hi, Hannah. How are you? I'm well. Thank you, Helen. Thank you for asking. I hope you're well too. Josephine's here from Devon. Christine too. Great. So it looks like people can see and hear us. Cool, tad too hot outside, glad to be in at the moment, yeah, it's a little bit warm out there. Um, you'll have to forgive me if I do sort of go quiet at any point during the video, I have got iced water and things like that next to me just because it is it's rather warm, so I'm going to have to keep hydrated through the video. Um, Dawn's here, watching from the Isle of Wight, hi Dawn, Jill is here as well, Pam's here, she's a bit warm too, yeah, I think it's, you know, traditional Brits, isn't it, a little bit of sunshine and uh, we all start complaining. <laughs> about the weather but you know it's one of those things and why not make ourselves feel cooler by making some Christmas cards there's kind of a logic there I guess Julie is here as well as Valerie thank you so much for joining me on this rather warm afternoon so yes so there's been plenty of requests in group um, for a demonstration on the gilded frame so essentially the gilded frame is the card shape and the frame die that was launched as part of Christmas Eve. Uh, it contains lots and lots and lots of dies where you can make mats and layers, you can make card blanks, you can make apertures, and of course this tunnel card concept. Now obviously during the shows on Crate and Craft we have 42 minutes where we have to fit in lots and lots of demonstrations and obviously go through the boards and show you everything that you're getting for the collection. So we don't always get enough time to go in depth in a demonstration as we would like to, which is where the Facebook Lives come into play. So each week, whenever we're able to, do look out for the request post. Um, anyone who's got any burning desires to see a particular demonstration or a particular um, set demonstrated, for example, just put your request in on that post. It's a great way to collate all of the requests in one place so we can go through them and make sure we're giving each one the attention that they so deserve. Uh, Carol's here from Manchester. Pauline in sunny Raynham. Lovely. Right, so... I think if everyone's happy, we might as well get started. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna scroll up through the comments to make sure I am up to date. Turn the camera around and squidge you down. So we've got everything laid out, ready to go on our mat. But essentially, what we're gonna be working with is this. It is the gilded frame. Sorry about the flare from the packaging there. Um, you've got a huge amount of dies in here. You've got mats and layers that can be card blanks as well. You've got this beautiful, 
detailed frame set which is almost like um you know those sort of victorian slash edwardian silver frames or gilt frames where you've got all this wonderful filigree work and this detailing around the inside as well they are all there to give you this wonderful sense of opulence so the inside of the frame itself doesn't have a cutting edge it does have cut lines but it doesn't create a full cut which gives you even more craftability with it because you can cut this frame in full and then choose if you wish to add in the different um, aperture dies to cut out a center to create an aperture should you wish same again with the smaller frame sets as well they have their mats and layers and they have their internal cut lines as a separate die set as well right to the middle we have this wonderful filigree design if you did want to cut them all and layer them this will give you a really luxurious effect but essentially what we want to be creating is our base layer so we're taking the outermost matte layer and we are cutting that from white cardstock so i'd probably recommend for a card base you want to go about three 300 to 350 GSM, nice weighty base. Um, I've gone 250 because that's what I had to hand. And we're going to run that through our die cutting machine to form our base, like so. Okay, so this is going to be the start. This is what we're going to be working on to create all of that wonderful depth and dimension from the tunnel card. I'm going to move those out of the way. Okay, you can already see we've got our stag and things ready to go. So if you are crafting along, do let me know. Don't forget, this could be done in any other colorway. So we are working with the graphite um, cardstock, for example, and also the sketch vignettes, this wonderful pencil drawn design, which are a free download for a Christmas time vignettes there. They come um, sort of grouped together. So they come with the traditional colors as well in both mirror and standard vignettes. You can create this card design in any one of the designs. So perhaps you want to create it from the colored vignettes the more traditional vignettes you can absolutely do so perhaps you want to create it with the different characters the principle is the same we're going to be going through the technique layer by layer stage by stage to give you guys a really good understanding on how we build this card so first up what we're going to do is add in the stand a little kickstand to the back this is created from one of the innermost aperture die sets and you see how it has this little base to it it mirrors itself on the design of that photo frame, you know, when we um, mentioned earlier. To the top, we've scored down about half an inch and we've got a little bit of red liner tapes that we're going to use to attach it to the back of the die cut base. So we're going to line up that little kickstand so it's nice and central, just using that sort of bobble, if you like, from the edge as our centre marker. We're going to make sure everything's nice and straight fold back that score you're gonna to have to forgive me because my nails i had to take them all off <laughs> i'm struggling without them believe it or not and peel away the red liner tape okay holding that in place as we then push that score line and red liner tape back down just ensures it keeps everything nice and even when we come to stand up you've then got this little kickstand effect on a photo frame obviously if you had it on the landscape you'd pop the little kickstand the other way and then it works the other way as well. So you've got options there. What I do recommend is if you're working on a lighter weight card like these, for example, create a stay. So this is a little bit of card with a couple of folds in it, which is gonna just act as a little bit more support for that kickstand. So we fold it into place. Um, I'm gonna do this upside down so I can get it in too short. Like so, yep, just checking that's all right in the right position. We can take off one side of uh, the red liner tape like so and uh, try and get it centrally so it just looks neat when you're finished. Sticking that down into place. Then we can take and remove the other side of the stay, the red liner tape on the stay. Fold it all back on itself and then fold it all shut. That's the easiest way to get everything to line up is to fold it all back in on itself. Now I'm covered in those little bits of red liner tape. I should have got some uh, talcum powder <laughs> ready to just get rid of the static, but there you have a little stay. So when it's open fully, you see how that acts as an extra little bit of support? It just means it's all a little bit of engineering. It's all keeping the card shape together. That's our card blank ready to go. You can, of course, if you wanted to, cut this outer die a couple of times, score down 
one side and create an opening card, a more traditional card design if you didn't fancy having a go with the kickstand effect. Mats and layers next. So we're going to go with the darker colour from the graphite paper pack, the Perfect Papers with this lovely sheen to it, lovely deep depth of colour. If you're working with the coloured, the more traditional coloured vignettes, perhaps trial this doing the Perfect Papers in the colour as well. And this time around again, we're using a little bit of foam. So one mil foam. We're taking just the edges of that foam and folding a little bit of that carrier of the tape back across the edge of the cardstock, okay? That means it's gonna give us a little tab, a little pulley, that when we come to line everything up, we can stick it down securely. You don't need to worry about the foam in the middle, okay? You don't need to worry about sticking that in place. That's gonna act as a little um, lift, if you like, a little bit of support to the middle of the card, but we don't need to worry about getting that stuck in place. We can then flip this over, line up all of the edges, get a really lovely, neat little, um, almost like a little tiny little, um, what do I want to say, matte and layer, like so. Hold the card in place and then pull the tabs away, like so, all the way around. It just ensures that when we come to stick everything down, it gives you this nice, neat finish with everything aligned properly. So you get the same... And width of uh, matte and layer all the way around. We're then going to start adding in the tunnel effect. So you build it from the background forward. So think about the elements you want in the background of your design. We're going to move on to the lightest colour of the Perfect Papers. And we've cut it again to give you this lovely matte and layer. So this is the next layer down from the matte and layers, give you again another little edge all the way around. Now what's really key, you don't actually need this piece in. This work, this will all be covered up once we're finished with the design, but this helps us align all the layers as we go through. So again, just peel away. We're using finger lift tape on this one, just because we want a flatter surface to work on. We've gone foam with the other one to create a little bit of height. And then this next layer is gonna be in finger lift, like so. So same thing again. Fold those little carrier sheets of the tape back. Position it so you've got all of the points lining up and a nice amount of just matte and layer all the way around. Hold it in place with your hand and peel away the carrier for the tape. Like so, giving you that perfect matte and layer look each and every time. So you see how this card is beginning to build up. Now we could go in just with the frame design if we wanted to at this point. Add that in. Let me grab one, I've got one ready. And that would create a really lovely card. Perhaps you want the trees and the stag, like so. That would give you a really nice card. Great for sending through the post. Obviously it folds nice and flat, but it gives you options. You see how this gilded frame begins to work to give you lots of craftability. However, we did promise a tunnel card, so that's what we're going to make. <laughs> we're going to start with um, a background layer of our moon. Now, I will show a little bit later on during the demo how we create this gilded effect. But essentially, when you start placing everything, just think about what's going to be in the background. We've got our tunnels and our apertures ready to go. So we've cut those so we can use them just to line up and see whether that moon is sitting in the right place. For example, you see I'm using that layer we've just stuck down, lining up that aperture and just moving my little moon like so until it's in a position that is working for me. So we can just move that one out for a moment, might want to switch that up just a little bit. So the moon has been created using the foiling and the wonderful gold foil. As I say, we will show you how to do that just during this demonstration, but I wanted to get a few of these layers down first so you can start to get a feel for how this card does come together. Let's go have a quick sip of my drink. Okay, so Nell's just joined us from Tampa in Florida from work. <laughs> She's doing sneaky watching at work. I like that. 
Uh, Michelle here. Good afternoon, Hannah. I can finally catch you live as on holiday this week. Oh, Michelle, you've picked a good week for holiday. It's lovely out there. Uh, Chris is here as well. And Mary. Hello, everyone. So if there's any questions so far, do let me know. Uh, we will try and cover everything as we go. So first up, we want to create this first tunnel. So this is going to be our smallest aperture, like so. And to the back, we need to add in our tunnel concertinas. So if you just grab the die, I can show you which one it is. All you're doing is using this one here. This is your tunnel card effect. It creates a concertina that you can then use to build your tunnel card designs. And it's super easy. If you see it go through in slow motion, you'll see how this really does come together. So we've cut it from white card. Again, 250, so there's nice strength to it. You'll notice there's little tabs all the way along. These are designed, if you want to take a pair of scissors and snip into them, when you fold, you'll find it gives you an extra wider surface should you need to, or should you need it, to attach even more depth to your um, apertures that would then sit into the tunnel. However, for this, we just need a concertina effect okay so this cuts out mountain fold so we fold it up to a peak the score lines are already in the die cut there valley fold and a mountain fold again to give you this concertina shape you notice we've already stuck the red liner tape both sides this can then go either on the sides of the tunnel card or on the top of the tunnel card you can even snip them down so don't think it has to be used with the gilded frame you can snip into these snip them down they basically work essentially a bit like foam but because they fold flat it means your project can go through the post it is really as simple as that so you're cutting two one for one side one for the other okay we then just need to position it so we just remove a little bit of the red liner tape like so you have to forgive me if this goes a bit wonky. <laughs> it is just simply because I'm trying to work around a camera. As you can imagine, it's uh, a little bit fingers and thumbs. But if you just position, try and get it nice and even. Check both sides to make sure it is as straight as possible. And then we're peeling away the tape. That is the first side of the first layer of our tunnel ready to go. We then repeat that on the other side. So another tunnel, remember we've got a mountain fold, those score lines are already there, a valley fold to the centre and a mountain fold to the other edge. If you do find it easier, although the score lines are already there, you can score over these again to give you even more depth to the design. And then we remove a little bit of the red liner like so. And just position. It's often easier to work on the mat, like a, um, a gridded mat at this point, so you can line everything up specifically. Oops, let's get rid of all the tape, like so. And you see how we're just flattening that down to make sure that red liner tape is nice and stuck to that base. When I then position that over the card, you see how you've got that lift? This is creating your tunnel. You can also squidge it and it will go flat as well. Norma, thank you so much for showing the tunnel. I've been scratching my head for a week. I think sometimes with the dies, it is, um, it's one of those moments where now it's kind of obvious when you start looking at, at how these come together, it's like, oh, it's a bit of a light bulb moment. Um, we do obviously demo each one of these within the shows as well. Any, anytime we've got a concept card, we do try and at least, uh, depends on how many shows there are, but at least two or three demonstrations on a particular concept. Um, so if you are ever stuck or you're ever struggling to find um, an answer for something, um, Crank and Craft Catch Up service, look back at the demonstrations, the videos are there, I think for seven days, but I think there might be a way to get them for longer. I'm not sure, I'll have to check on that. Um, but yes, and then you can just watch the demonstrations back. Or, you know, if there's something you are struggling with, um, you know, asking group, everyone's super friendly, everyone is there to help one another. And don't forget, you can always put a request in 
for the Facebook Live tutorials as well. So when we come to layer up, take some time to make sure everything is aligned. You see how by having that background, that, that second matte layer, this sort of taupe layer we've got in between, it's helping us and guiding us to position that die properly. So we can line it up when we squidge it down like so, see that it's all aligned and then peel away the red liner tape. Whenever you're working with a concept card, stick one side first. Don't try and stick everything in one go because you're just going to get in a bit of a mess. This is the easiest way to do it is make sure you're doing it in this kind of order where you've got one side stuck and then the second side stuck. And do you see how now you're getting that depth? Obviously what you could do if you wanted is cut the tunnels from matching color card um, just take a little bit more time folding them to make sure you don't crease or break these um, surface paper and that way they, they're hidden even more within the design itself okay so both sides as I say those could be top and bottom depending on what kind of design you are doing okay next up we're going to go for the next tunnel with tunnel cards and aperture cards I often find it's easiest to build them and then if you've got space kind of pop your elements into it as well it just simply gives us a little bit more option. Now I'm going to have to cut a couple more of these little concertinas. So I'll get these into place fairly quickly. And then we'll have to run them through the die cutting machine because I'm going to need two more for this particular design. And when you're sticking them to the inside aperture, so the larger aperture, just take your time lining them up. You don't want them sort of peering over the edge of the car. But don't forget, as I said, you could snip them. So you could snip this in half and have them further up and further apart like so. I don't know where my other ones have gone. I did have them all cut, but it won't take long to cut another couple, will it? So again, just popping that into place, lining it up, making sure it's not peeking over the edge of that aperture and smoothing down. And then I'm gonna grab oh, my die, because I'm gonna need a couple more, and I'm sure I've got some scrap bits of card earlier chucking things everywhere at the minute oops and we can cut a couple of those so does anyone have any questions just whilst we're cutting a couple more of these little apertures let me know if there's anything that doesn't make sense let me know if there's anything you want to see now is the time to ask <laughs> because i can read and surprisingly work die cutting machine at the same time gives me a little bit of hands-free moment i'm using the cut and boss a uh, nice automatic die cutting machine um i just find it does the job so well and my plates don't walk too much either so into the die cutting machine it goes it's quite nice actually because you get to see how we do the concertina at this stage as well so i wanted to go all out and kind of make lots and lots of layers of the tunnel for you so you can get a really good idea of how these cards come together okay so that's one like so and we'll go for another one I'll use another big card because I've got a couple bits of spare card from a project that I may or may not be working on currently <laughs> and into the die cutting machine so whilst that's cutting you can see how these are already scored so you just fold along like so valley fold all the way along if you prefer, as I say, pre-scoring, uh, using a little scoreboard or something like that, for example, you can absolutely do so. Use a bone folder if you want a nice crisp finish on the scores as well. And here's my other one. So again, move my scissors out of the way before I do some damage with them. So just folding along. Are the vignettes in stamps? Oh, I'm not quite sure what you mean with that question, Josephine. Uh, we do do stamp um, designs. A couple of the floral collections have matching stamps that would then uh, coordinate with the die designs as well. And we do do sentiment stamps as well. Apologies if that's not quite what you mean. Um, by all means, just type your, your question again and I'll see whether I can answer it. So to the edges, as you've seen, 
we're adding a little bit of red liner tape. Uh, try and find a red liner tape that is a nice fit to the concertina, just simply because the more stick you have, the se more secure the card is going to be. I know that sounds like an obvious thing to say, but sometimes, you know, it's it's worth adding in that little bit extra wider red liner tape here rather than the super slim version and we're just all the way along like so and all the way along oh would it be possible in the future to include two metal fold so we can at least cut at least two it is possible um however it would depend on the size of the die um we try and make sure you get as much usability and craftability and as many die sets from each design as possible um adding in another one of these metal ones for the tunnel probably would have taken away from something else within the die set itself so as you've seen we're gonna take away part of the red liner tape there lining it up just so it kisses the top of that aperture and smoothing into place and you see how quickly it comes together even with die cutting the elements um you can see how you're building these cards which is really great when it comes to christmas cards because i'm sure you guys have lots of friends and family that you would like to send christmas cards to and having the ability to cut things and design things quickly is a great time saving device. So just lining that one up again, like so, making sure it's not peeping over the edge and just smoothing into place. So now we've got all of our frames, all of our apertures ready to go. Rather than building the rest of the card at the minute, I will finish it obviously, I thought it might be nice just to show you a few of the last little elements. So that moon, for example, and that gilded frame, because um, I know we did get a couple of questions about the gilded frame um, and how the stencils work. So I've got one ready to go. It has been cut from 250, super smooth. Um, Josephine, like the deer image. The deer image, that's, that's the sketch vignette this time around. Um, that one is a vignette they, we also have the traditional colorway vignette as well we don't have these designs available as stamps but as i said we do have a few of the different collections available as stamp sets too i hope that answers your question josephine um stencil okay so i know a couple of you guys were asking about how we get the foil effect on the stencil so the gilded frame die set comes with a stencil as well and you'll notice you've got the outer frame and the inner frames and then this extra little bonus snowflake or star stencil as well depending on how you want to use them all the way around the stencil you've obviously got the cutout stencil bit and then you've got these little lines like here and like here these lines help you line up with the outside of the frame that you're working with you've also got on the larger frame these little slits these little cut holes all the way around those are, if you want to, if you find it easier, you can slot the corner of the frame in. It helps you then line up the design. Once you've slot them in all the way round, it gives you a much better idea of how to um, apply the foiling adhesive. For me, I kind of like to go a little bit rogue because for foiling, it's quite nice to have more of a shabby chic effect. So rather than having everything super, super, super precise, we can instead line the stencil up fairly roughly, just getting it all in place like so. And that top bit there as well. And you'll see it kind of just ease into place. It all comes together quite nicely. That bottom corner needs adjusting like so. But I'm not going to be too precious about it. The idea of crafting, of adding in a little bit of foiling adhesive, for example, just gives you a hint it doesn't have to be precise we can hold the stencil in place using a little bit of repositionable tape um i'd say top and bottom or side and side whatever works for you guys and then we're going to go in with our foil adhesive what i'm going to do is move my vignettes out of the way because i've got an awful habit of uh, putting everything and ev anything into my glue when i'm using it does anyone else do that or is it just me 
it gets in an absolute mess with these things. Okay, foiling adhesive. So this is specially formulated glue that remains tacky, okay? Makes it absolutely perfect for using things like foiling because it gives you this wonderful adhesion. So a little bit out onto either a little scrap bit of card or in this case, I'm working on um, a mat that's easy to wipe clean. And then we're using a sponge. The trick is less is more when it comes to foiling adhesive. So pick up some on your sponge and then tap away most of the excess. Okay, so it's a nice squidgy uh, little sponge here for foiling. We then come into the stencil itself and it's a case of just working around the stencil. Remember, this glue stays tacky. So you don't have to rush, you can take your time and you can go in a couple of times as well. Keep adding a little bit more glue, like so. Tap away the excess. Whenever you add more glue to your sponge, tap away that excess before going in to your project. It really doesn't take much glue to add in design. Sorry, my mat is missing a couple of its uh, bobbly bits underneath to keep it straight, so it's a bit noisy. <laughs> By using a sponge to apply, it means you can squidge down into the depth of that, that stencil and get that glue onto the surface of the piece you're working on. So a little bit more glue. Come on, glue. What's going on here? Let's just give you a little bit of a wipe. Oops. Oh, nearly had you guys. <laughs> nearly had you. Sorry about that. So a little bit more glue. And remember, each time, tap away that excess. That's really, really, really key. If you go in with too much, all it's going to do is squidge all over the surface. It's going to get underneath the uh, stencil itself. You're going to lose the detail and the clarity of the design. So again, just tapping away, getting into all those little areas. Remember, it doesn't have to be neat. It's just getting a little bit of the glue on there. Work over. You see, I don't go in once. We go in a couple of times just over the same area to even that glue out as well. But I'm not being too precious about where I'm getting the glue. As long as it's over some part of the design, that's absolutely fine because we're going to go for a little bit of a shabby chic look with this. Final little tap over areas like so. Sponge goes to one side. Stencil goes into warm soapy water, if I had some next to me, for cleaning off. And then we can introduce our foiling station. <laughs> I call it this, it's literally just a box. But it means when we come to foil anything, all of the flakes, all of the foil is kept nice and secure in one place. Okay. So you see we're using gold foil, you could be using the rose gold, you could be using the silver, whatever you'd like to go with your project. I'm going to move, you can see look some of my older demos in there as well. <laughs> move those out of the way for a second I think. Okay, so the first say the foiling adhesive stays sticky, so you don't have to rush at this stage, you can just enjoy the making of it. Just getting a little bit of that um, foiling adhesive off my fingers before I put my fingers in the... Um, foil because I'm sure it will grab to everything and we're going to take a new sheet if I've got a new sheet in here oops of oh, foil come here yes we've got a couple of sheets of foil so come away paper so if you um have a little bit of aversion to foil or anything like that or you don't think like things sticking to your fingers Use talcum powder before you go into the foil. Uh, that way it makes sure it doesn't cling to your fingers if you like. And we can just work around tearing bits of the sheet away and gently tapping them into place wherever we've popped a little bit of the foiling adhesive down. So you see how it grabs hold really quickly. Because you've put a nice thin layer on, you don't have to wait for it to go off. You don't need to wait for it to be ready at the right sort of um, consistency to work with or anything like that it is just good to go by working in a box it a keeps your flakes and your foil in one place but it also means all of this excess that you've used for other projects nothing gets wasted so we can go in with big bits of the sheet like this 
and rub them over where the glue is and then all of this extra flake can be used for another project. So once we've got all of our foil on places where there is glue, we can begin rubbing the foil into place. It's almost like burnishing it down. Um, you get kind of a nice um, point of difference. If you've used the flat sheet, you get this highly shiny finish. If you've used areas where it's like, um, I'm going to say dust because I think that describes this the best. It gives you more of an antiqued look as well. So do consider about the kind of look you want to the design as well. So all the way around with the fingertip, just feeling for anywhere that might need a little bit more foil. Perhaps it's not covered up with all your glue, for example. And just burnish that foil into place. Now at the moment, it looks incredibly messy, but we can go in and add, someone said, don't sneeze, don't make me laugh either, because <laughs> it could end up being a bit of a disaster in here in a combined space with lots of flakes everywhere. I was saying, saying to my partner the other day, actually, I've only just cleared up Christmas, so, you know, the whole of our flat, because we're still obviously working from home, is, um, it was covered in glitter and foil at one stage, but yeah, it has all been cleared up until now, so I'm trying my best not to laugh or sneeze all over the bits of foil there. Okay, so at this stage, it kind of looks a little bit messy. That's not a problem. We just need to get rid of any of that excess flake, okay? To do that, what we use is something called a beard sponge. One like this. Mine's always covered in flakes because I keep everything in my boxes, otherwise I'll lose all the things. Kim's watching from South Australia. Thank you for joining us, Kim. So all we need to do is take the beard sponge and rub. So gentle circular motions and you'll see all of that excess foil comes away leaving the foil only in places where the glue is. Go over it a couple of times gently because obviously this is a die cut so you don't want to pull any of your die cut areas either. If there's any little bits which are quite stubborn just concentrate on them. Just go over them a couple of times. Rub all the way round and again, don't forget all of everything that you're rubbing away from the surface is being caught by the box to be used in another project. So again, there's no waste, which is just fantastic. So if I show you this close up, from where can we purchase a beard sponge, Jean? Jean, uh, we did have them on the show. Um, I think if you check Create and Craft and type in beard sponge, they will probably come up because um, I know we did have them for alongside the foiling kit on there so you see here where you've got sort of the excess foil it doesn't look very neat it doesn't look like the design we're trying to achieve when we go in with the sponge just round like so you literally just stroke the surface you don't have to be rough with this or anything like that it is just to capture and take away that excess design like so and now you see, you've then got this wonderful flash of the foil. It makes it shiny as well because you're burnishing it down. And we just work around the whole of the project. Just brushing away that excess. It, it's almost like um, a nice sort of a reveal. It's a little bit like magic as it comes to reveal the actual design we're working with, where the, just that glue is holding the foil gives you this wonderful look, like so. So we work around the whole of the design and we clean off our fingers <laughs> afterwards. As I say, do remember if you um, use a little bit of talcum powder, it will stop all of the foil sticking to your fingertips. We move that out, because I have got, here's one I made earlier, as you've seen. Once you finish, because you can go in a couple of times. If you want even more foil on there, go over it a couple of times with the stencil and the glue. There's nothing stopping you doing that. And you get this wonderful, we've gone quite light on this one, but just nice hint of a foil to the design like so. so I'm just cleaning up my fingers a little bit, just so they're not too sticky for when we start making the rest of the card. I hope that makes sense um, for the couple of people that did ask 
to see the foil and the stencils demonstrated. The principle is exactly the same with the snow, um, the snow flurry, and also the full moon that we have used in the tunnel car design as well. So all that's left to do is build up the rest of our tunnel. So we've got the first layer down. We're gonna add in the next layer. Remember, a little bit of the tape over the edge. And we line up. So we're using those edges. When you're at home, you can stand over these or properly lean over these to make sure you're getting a nice adhesion between the layers there and then stick down. Now we've used this almost like a, a sense of perspective. We're working up in the size of apertures. So our background, this first layer for the tunnel, we've used a smaller aperture, which the moon is poking through. For the other layers, we've gone with this bigger aperture. And that really does highlight this even more of a sense of perspective, a sense of depth to the tunnel card. Uh, Caroline's joined us from Ireland. Hi, Caroline. If you wanted to use glitter instead of foil, what glue would you use? Um, I would suggest just normal, normal either white glue or glue pen. Um, there's like the quickie glue pens. Um, depends what you're gluing on to as well. If you're gluing on to card and things, your white glue and your quickie glue pen would be perfect for foil. Same as if you wanted to create that same sort of look with embossing powders. Perhaps you wanted to use embossing ink rather than glue and then embossing powders. You've got options for that stencil. Perhaps you just want to stencil through it using normal ink as well. You could do that too. So we're just sticking the other side down. Okay, that's giving us a huge amount of depth to the tunnel card. Pauline's just joined us. Hi, Pauline. And the final, do I put the final layer on or shall I put some designs in? Let's put the final layer on. You'll find a way that works for you when it comes to making the, the tunnel cards and things. Um, I tend to like to construct and then add the detail, but sometimes it's not always possible to do that. So just be mindful of, of when you're constructing and when you're adding layers. So again, red liner tape over the edge, stick it into place, however works for you, line up those edges, line up those mats and layers, and make sure you're tucking that concertina in so it's hidden by the outside frame. And we're going to do the other side as well. Now, something, a card like this where you've got sort of a triple tunnel and you've got lots and lots of depth, you probably want to create a gift box to match with it. That would be a great idea because you're going to get a lot of height from something like this. I turn that to its side, it's like a, like a mega card. But don't forget, because you're using those concertinas, it does fold flat as well. Oh, I've got a little bit of... Oh, I sound surprised that I've got a little bit of a foil on the front of the card there. Okay, so that's given us our design of the tunnel. Into this, we can start adding our designs. Remember, it is up to you how you stick these in and whether you want to stop with each layer, then add the designs in. For me, as long as I can slot them in, I do find it easier to work like this because it gives me a good idea of what I'm working with. Remember... Test the design first, like so, just so we can test that it's all going to work nicely before we stick. Once we're happy, take a photo. Um, there's nothing stopping you taking a picture of your ideas. Perhaps, you know, if you're struggling with an idea, construct your card bases, have your diet vignette separate, and then come back to it at another stage. So my tree is going to go in that side. So a little bit of pin flare, just so we've got wiggle room when we slot it in. We can then adjust it should we wish, like so. And I quite like that where the top of the tree is just nestled just so you can see it. I think that gives you a great sense of depth to the card. And because we're using this smaller aperture, we can actually add more to it as well. So we're going to go in with another tree, a smaller tree this time, that we're going to layer over the top, again, giving us more areas to stick that tree to. Oops, just move that one a little bit. Okay, so that sticks there. So we want a little bit of glue up one side and glue along the base. And we're going to nestle that in like so. 
So we're using that first tree as something to stick to as well, making sure that it's nice and straight. And then we put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the tree as well. So you see how you're already building that depth. If you wanted even more trees, just go for it. Add more trees in the background of the design. Perhaps you want them on the base in front of the moon. It's all about depth and perspective for a tunnel card. Magnus, the stag, isn't he handsome? He's really gorgeous in his sketch vignette. He's going to go on that next layer up. Okay, and we're going to tuck him into one side. We're going to have him almost like he's kind of sauntering through the forest. So his glue needs to go just on his neck and on his hoofs as well. Hooves. Like so. And then we can tuck him. Maybe, maybe we can put a little bit on his ear as well. So it's a little bit like thinking about where you've got the ability to attach. So just tucking him in, just getting rid of any excess glue to neaten things up like so. I knocked that tree as well. Let's pop that back into place. And do you see how now you're building this design? I've got a little bit of glue squidged out there, but it doesn't matter too much. Obviously, when you're making this at home, you can be a little bit more careful than me <laughs> with all of my fingers and thumbs in the way. But you see how, because you're positioning him further forward, he's much bigger than the tree. So it gives you this true sense of perspective. Our final layer is going to be our gilded frame. A little bit of foam pads on the back, because why not? You know, why not add even more height at this stage? Um, whenever you're working with uh, cardstock and foam pads and things like that, just remember less is more. You know, the shape and the weight of the card, if you're using 250 like this one is or 300, the weight of the card will hold its own. You don't need to, you know, cut lots and lots of little foam pads down and get them on every inch of the card. Um, having just a few in strategically placed areas means the frame will stay nice and flat and nice and flush. It gives you a little bit of height using foam pads as well, but it's less stress than trying to cut them up and get them in all little areas as well. So normally I'd get like one in place. You've seen me do that before, get one side in place and then remove the rest. But I'm feeling a little bit maverick today. So we're going to go straight in, lining that up. Oops, see, that's why I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Lining up like so. Using the center of the aperture and that outside frame as guidance. And you see how, oh, come on, dear. You've just taken a tumble as well. Stick you back in there. By adding that frame, it gives you that finishing flourish, that wonderful sense of depth. There we have one finished tunnel card with lots and lots of layers. Of course, you can absolutely, absolutely add even more should you wish to. But just take a look at the depth you're getting with that. I won't squidge it down because obviously my glue is still drying. But you get the idea, hopefully, on how we bring that card together. Get rid of the little excess bits on the bottom, Hannah. Neaten it all up. And there is our tunnel card. So I'm just going to flick the camera back round. Oops. Hopefully that made sense. I will show you the card from this angle as well, because sometimes it's a little bit easier to see. There you go. One finished tunnel card with lots of depth and perspective. Of course, as we say, if you want to build a forest in there, add even more trees, get even more sense of the deer magnus emerging from the forest background there. You've got the frame and you've got all of that wonderful tunnel design. The idea of having that moon in the background in the gold foil, the same uh, way we've added in the gold foil to the stencil just draws that background to the foreground of the design and ties everything together. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. My dear is falling over again. <laughs> okay, so is there any questions at this stage? Uh, lots of people liking that one. Thank you. That's very kind. Thank you all for your kind comments. It's nice to be able to take the time over the demonstration as well. Um, and do it almost more like in real time. I've not cut off see, all the mats and layers and things like that. Um, but I'm sure that's something you can, you guys can have a play with at home. Uh, any questions? Let me know. I will be around for a little while, as I always am, after the video. So if anyone does have any questions, just type them up in the comments. And I will try and answer as many as I can. 
Linda liked the card, Carol liked the card, thank you, and Dawn liked the card as well, thank you guys, That's, that does mean a lot because it's always nice um, to chat with you guys. Normal, thank you, um, I've learnt so much. Oh, that's, do you know what, that makes my day because that is the aim of the game. As long as you guys even just take one thing away from a demonstration, then that is absolutely fantastic. Um, I will pop up another request post in groups. Do let me know if there's anything you would like to see for the next demonstration. Um, I'm going to try and do it on a different day next week. Can't say why. <laughs> I'm going to get myself into trouble if I say anything. Um, so it won't be Thursday next week. Um, it might be maybe Friday. Who knows? Um, but do let me know if there's anything you want to see. If we do get a chance to do another demonstration next week, we will absolutely do so. If not, it will be the week after. Um, so yeah, uh, don't forget if you do want to make your own tunnel cards, I would absolutely love to see them. So please, please do share them in group. Sue, can gilding wax be used on frame? Absolutely, go for it. Yep, go for it. If you want to try out gilding wax, that's what the great thing is about die cutting. You have got the dies, you can cut them endless amounts of time and you can have a play with them. Um, thank you for all your nice comments. That, it really does mean the world that you guys have enjoyed the demonstration. I missed you for the last two weeks whilst we were doing Christmas, so it's been nice to catch up. Um, let me know what you'd like to see next time and until then, happy crafting. See you later.